Hello! This video tutorial gives you an overview of the sound bank functionality in WISE. You will see how to create sound banks and what they contain, how sound banks are loaded by the game code, and finally, you'll see different approaches for managing sound banks that have been adapted for different types of games. A bank is basically the audio package the sound engine uses to play back audio in the game. These banks are loaded into a game's platform memory at a particular point in the game. By loading only what is necessary, you can also optimize the amount of memory that is being used for audio by each platform. In WISE, there are two types of sound banks. The initialization bank and sound banks. The initialization bank is a special bank that contains all the general information about a project, including information on the bus hierarchy game syncs, and environmental effects. The initialization bank is not displayed in WISE, but is automatically created when the sound banks are generated. The initialization bank is usually loaded once at the beginning of the game so that all the general project information is easily accessible during gameplay. By default, the initialization bank is named init.bnk. Sound banks, on the other hand, are created in WISE and contain a combination of events, sound structures from the actor mixer and interactive music hierarchies, and or media files. Unlike the init bank, sound banks are generally loaded and unloaded at different points in the game to better utilize platform memory usage. Sound banks can be created manually in WISE or automatically by importing a sound bank definition file. Now that you are familiar with the two types of banks, let's look at how you create sound banks in WISE. In the Project Explorer, switch to the Sound Banks tab, right-click on a work unit, and select New Child Sound Bank. Name the sound bank Birds Level 1. Now that the sound bank is created, we can switch to the sound bank layout to start adding content to it. The sound bank layout is an optimized layout for building, editing, and generating sound banks. The two main views in the layout are the sound bank manager and the sound bank editor. The sound bank manager is where you determine which sound banks will be generated on the platforms and languages of your choice. The sound bank editor is where you add and edit the events and sound structures you want included in your sound bank. Before you can add any content to a sound bank, you must first load it into the sound bank editor. To add content to a bank, simply drag an audio object or event from the Project Explorer to your sound bank in the sound bank editor. When you add an event or audio object to a sound bank, all related objects, events, and media files are automatically added by default. Since we added only the birds event, let's switch to the edit tab to see what else was automatically added. In our case, we can see that the event brought the container birds level 1 along with a variety of sound objects and their corresponding media files. The related audio objects and media files were added because the events, structures, and media checkboxes on the Add tab were selected. In some situations, however, you may want the sound bank to contain only events or only media. In these cases, you can simply clear the checkboxes for the elements you don't want in the bank. If we clear the Events and Structures checkboxes and then switch back to the Edit tab, we can see that only the audio files related to the Play Random Birds Level 1 event are now included in the bank. You can also exclude specific media files and sound structures based on their relationship to particular game syncs. If we add the Play Birds Power Level 1 event to the sound bank and then switch to the Game Syncs tab, you will notice that a list of states, switches, and or triggers associated with this event is displayed. Let's say the super state is not used in Level 1, so you will want to exclude it from the sound bank. By excluding the super game sync from the sound bank, you will also exclude all corresponding sound structures and media files. You will notice that WISE displays the sample rate, audio format, and size of each media file within the sound bank. This allows you to locate files that are using the wrong settings or are taking up too much space. For example, let's say that all the files in our sound bank should be using the ADPCM audio format. 
If we quickly scan through the media files in our sound bank, we can see that the WAV file BIRD3 uses PCM. To change the conversion settings for this media file, simply right-click the file and select Conversion Settings. Modify the Windows audio format to ADPCM and then reconvert the file. The new conversion settings and file size will be displayed in the editor. You can use this technique to fine-tune and tweak the size of your sound banks. Now that the contents of the BIRDS Level 1 sound bank have been determined, we can go ahead and generate it. Before generating our sound bank, we need to first determine what information will be included, how it will be included, in what format will it be generated, and where the sound bank will be saved. This is all done on the sound banks tab of the project settings dialog box. The sound bank settings section contains a series of options that can help you with the game integration. We encourage you to read the contextual help to get more details about each option. The sound banks path section indicates where the sound banks will be created for each platform. By default, it points to the generated sound banks folder found within your project folder, but you can change this location to another folder on your workstation or anywhere on your network. Finally, the pre and post generation steps section allows you to perform certain tasks immediately prior to or following the generation of sound banks. For example, you could run a command line script to check out certain sound bank files from your source control system before generating, and then after the files have been generated, you can have the streamed files copied to a new location. For our example, let's leave the sound bank settings at their default settings. Now, we are ready to generate the sound bank we created earlier. In the sound bank manager, select the checkbox beside the birds level 1 sound bank. Since different sound banks are created for each platform and language, you need to specify which platforms and languages the sound banks will be created for. For our example, we will select only Windows and English. The only thing left to do is to click the Generate button, which starts the generation process. The sound banks are generated and the stream files are copied into the appropriate subfolders under the Generated Sound Bank folder. If you modify the sound bank's path, your sound banks will be saved into the folders you specified. When sound banks are created manually in WISE, the best approach is to include top node elements in the sound bank to ensure that all child objects will be included in the bank. Top node objects include folders, work units, and categories. For example, if you want to have only one sound bank for your game, which is often the case at the early stages of development, you can simply drag the Events category to include all the events, audio objects, and media used in your project. Another example would be to add the Interactive Music Hierarchy category to a sound bank to package all objects and media associated with music. WISE maintains an active link between the elements in a sound bank and those in your project. This means that once these top-level nodes are added to the sound bank, you will never have to edit them again because any new object or event that is created under these nodes will automatically be added to your sound bank. The easiest and most efficient method for creating and populating sound banks is by importing a definition file. A definition file can be used to automate the inclusion of events into sound banks. A parser needs to be created that will retrieve all the events from your game and organize them into several banks in a sound bank definition file. A definition file is a simple tab delimited text file that contains a list of events classified by sound bank. Keywords can also be added after the event name to specify the types of data and or media that will be included in the sound bank. The game sync exclusion keyword can also be used to exclude a specific state, switch, or trigger from a sound bank. When a game sync is excluded from the sound bank, all corresponding sound structures and media files are excluded as well. Once the definition file is created, you simply need to import it into WISE, and WISE automatically creates and or updates sound banks and assigns all related events to them.
Let's import one now. This definition file will create a new sound bank for level 2 and will add all the associated events, sound structures, and media. Right-click on the sound banks node in the Project Explorer and select the Import Definition File option from the menu. Navigate to the folder where the definition file is located, select it, and then click Open. The new sound bank is created with the data and media specified in the definition file. As your project evolves, you'll simply need to re-import updated definition files to keep your sound banks in sync with the project. If you choose to manage the sound banks in your project using definition files, it will involve some programming at the beginning of the development cycle. The code you create will parse your game to retrieve all events and will then organize them within a definition file. Although it requires additional work up front, it is certainly worth the effort because it provides an almost completely automatic pipeline for building and maintaining the sound banks in your game. WISE offers different methods for managing sound banks in your game. This part of the tutorial discusses two different methods and shows how each one can be used to your advantage on almost any project. The first and more traditional method uses sound banks that contain a mix of event data, object structure data, and media. The entire contents of the banks are unloaded and loaded at particular points in the game, such as when changing zones or levels. By loading all the data and media into memory at the same time, this method not only ensures that all data and media are ready to play when required, but it performs very little disk seeking during gameplay, which frees up the disk for other disk intensive tasks. The main drawback of this method is that a substantial amount of memory is taken for the entire time that the sound banks are loaded. This method also explicitly loads all content without verifying to see if media files are already loaded into memory. Despite its drawbacks, this method can be useful in many situations. A good example is a pinball game, where all data and media must be available at all times. The second method prepares events in advance, allowing you to dynamically load the media for your game only when it is absolutely required. To achieve this, the event metadata is packaged in different sound banks than the structured data and media files. The event sound banks are generally loaded and kept in memory. Prior to events being called by the game, they are prepared by the sound engine, which loads only the media files and sound structures associated with this event. When the event is no longer required, the event is unprepared and the corresponding media files and structured data are purged from memory. Since WISE needs a way to find the corresponding data and or media that resides in another bank, it includes references to the corresponding content stored in other sound banks. This means less time is spent by the game developer managing sound banks. Unlike the first method, the prepare event method keeps memory usage at a minimum by performing a check before loading any media file to ensure that the media file is not already in memory. Now, although this method is very efficient in terms of memory usage, it does require more disk seeking than loading a sound bank outright, which means it may not be appropriate in all situations. For example, you might not want to use this method if you already have many files that are streamed from the disk. You might want to reserve this method for platforms that have a hard drive, for example. Other methods for loading banks also exist, including two versions of the prepare bank method. These two additional methods combine the benefits of load bank and prepare event, allowing you to combine all data and media within the same bank, avoiding media duplication in memory, and still load media only when required. Although several different methods for loading sound banks exists, it is important to note that these methods are not mutually exclusive, which means that you can use a variety of methods concurrently to handle different situations in the same game. That's it! You now have a good idea how to create and manage sound banks for your project. For further information about sound banks and loading methods, refer to the Managing Sound Banks section of the WISE Help or the Integrating Banks section of the SDK Help.